Good morning, welcome to the Devotions on the Doncaster Methodist YouTube channel. It's good to have you with us. If you've just stumbled across us, welcome. Have a check out of the other uh, things that we've got on here. Um, if you've been with us all week, it's good to have you back again. It's Thursday the 7th of April and uh, today we are continuing in our series from Passion to Palm. Uh, we've looked already at um, passion, we've looked at peace, we've looked at prayer and today we will have a fourth P uh, which I will tell you about in a minute. First of all though we do our attitude of gratitude. Uh, today my attitude of gratitude um, is I tried to notice little things this week and so I was coming back in from the gym and I bent to look at the the pots by the front door which I was I talked about yesterday and there was a little tiny ladybird on the leaf of one of the um one of the leaves that I can't remember the name of <laughs> sorry oh my goodness it begins with a c little pink flowers anyway pretty anyway uh, this little ladybird and it the the red just shone out against the dark green of the leaf and it looked beautiful um, and then when I parked the car in my parking space at church on Tuesday evening, I noticed that somebody has planted some little tete-a-tete, -tete, uh, some little narcissi um, underneath the bush, which is, the, and the bush is flowering, but these little tete-a-tete -tete, uh, are just chatting to each other underneath the bush and it was really pretty. So I've been trying to notice little things like that. And so that's my attitude of gratitude this week is for the little things uh, that we sometimes overlook, but that are there and full of beauty when we see them. So back to our, pro our progression through the week. I'm going to run out of P words in a minute. Um, anyway, so we have had passion, we've had peace, we've had prayer. And today our fourth P is prediction. Prediction. Again, we're, we're delving into a bit of Holy Week with this one. But there are lots of Lots and lots of things about um, this time of um, Passion, Palm and Easter that have been predicted, were, were predicted um, in the Old Testament, in, in uh, the prophecies back there, but also that Jesus predicted at the time as well. And one of those is in John chapter 13 and it's entitled Jesus Predicts His Betrayal and it's from verse 18 and it says this. I'm not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen, but this is to, to fulfil the scripture. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. I'm telling you now, and that's that was a, a prophecy from the Old Testament. Um, I am telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am he. I tell you the truth. Whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. After he said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. Jesus' disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which one of them he meant. One of them, the disciple who Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it's the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. And as soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. We don't often know when something uh, terrible is going to happen. It it happens and, and we look back and think, could we have done something to prevent it? Could we have done something that would have, um, you know, made it easier? Or could we have done something that would have de deferred it or have made it less terrible? We look at all those what ifs, don't we? But what if we could have predicted it and could have predicted it in a way that we could have stopped it? Jesus predicted that Judas Iscariot would betray him and he still ate with him and he still allowed him to go and do that. He could have stopped him. 
He could have kicked up a big fuss, told the other disciples who would have uh, stepped in and said, absolutely, yeah, no way, you're not going to do that. Are you? That's dis disgraceful, preposterous. You can't, you can't do that. But Jesus knew that it was the will of God. And so, and he knew that it was the only way that our sins could be pe paid for was by his death and resurrection. So it wasn't that Jesus just couldn't be bothered to stop Judas. He didn't stop him because he loves us so much that he allowed that to happen so that that chain of events would unfold and he would be our saviour. What a saviour that is, eh? Who knew what was going to happen, had the ability and the means to be able to stop it and yet still let it go ahead. We can't say thank you enough for something like that, can we? We really can't. Let's pray. Lord God, it just... It's too much for us to understand how you knew that Judas, one of your closest disciples, would betray you. And yet you ate with him and you allowed that to happen, even though you could have kicked up and, and stopped it. But you did that for each and every one of us. Lord, our attitude of gratitude is to you. Thank you. For loving us so much that you went through that most difficult, painful, awful time to pay the price for our sin. Lord, as we respond to the knowledge of that in our lives, help us to live our lives in the love that you give, the peace that you bring and the strength that you show. We ask all of this in Jesus' name and once again for his glory. Amen. God bless you and keep you, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you and give you his peace and I will see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>